Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maggie. Today is my December budget. I am a monthly zero-based budgeter um, and I like to share on paper and pen. Um, I do do this on a spreadsheet first, but I can tinker with that all day. So once I get to the point where I feel like, all right, this is it, that's when I film and, you know, write it down. So I'm excited to dive in the last budget of the year. Crazy how, um, you know, it snuck up on us. And throughout the month, I'm going to be kind of figuring out what my plans are for next year. I am going to be posting every day of December for Vlogmas. Um, so there will be a few extra financial videos up on my channel as well as other stuff. But yeah, let's go ahead and dive in with the budget. So the first thing is I've already prepped my... Um, spread here. So I use a golden coil planner and one of my favorite parts of it is that I can have um, customization. So one of those is I do a second monthly calendar spread. So this is just for my finances and it's really great for me to have, you know, this set up and then I can have my personal life separately and it's really great. So um, as far as you know, the month monetarily, nothing too crazy. My bills are pretty set. I'm um, consumer debt free. The only uh, debt I have is my mortgage. So I really don't have anything crazy going on bill wise. I do have quite a bit of time off. Um, so I'm doing some half days at the end of the year, a couple extra days off towards the end of the year too. Um, so with the Christmas holidays, um, I usually go out of town to see family and whatnot. It's also my birthday at the end of the month. Um, I turn 28 and yeah, so that's kind of what I have going on here. Nothing too much to, um, you know, point out, but I do like to do just a quick little overview here. So let's go ahead and actually dive into the numbers. So this is the template I like to use. I just use lined paper. You totally can, you know, make this fancier, but this is what I do. So for the first part, I need to write in what my budgeted income is going to be. So I budget off of my salary. Um, I am a month ahead. So I use the checks that I get in November for December. And then when I get paid throughout December, I'm paid twice a month on the 15th and the last day of the month. They sit in my account and then I use them in January. So um, I have a little bit of difference this month than my normal. So I've got $4,469.87. Um, uh, I'm budgeting off of. I do get a cell phone stipend through work and it got skipped in October. So I got two in November. And again, I'm a month ahead, so it didn't show up in my budget till December. But um, over the course of the year, it's all the same. I just was a little um, different between October and November being that they skipped it once by accident. That's also why it's always important to always check your pay stubs, even if you know, you've never had an issue. That was the first time and I just messaged my payroll person and got it figured out. Um, so the first section of my budget is for expenses. These are my, I would guess you would call them like fixed expenses, but I include grocery, gas, and spending in here as well, which are more traditionally variable. But essentially, I look at it as these are my must-haves. Everything below that, you know, is extra. So um, this is kind of my planned outgoing. Um, so mortgage is the normal amount, $1,011.86. My HOA is two sixty three fifteen. I actually just got in the mail um, my notice of what my monthly due will be for next year. It did go up about twenty dollars, which is what I anticipated. Um, so that was good to get that number so I can plan out the new year. Insurance. This includes my car insurance, homeowners insurance, and I have an umbrella policy. So all three of these, um, the total is one seventy five eighty a month. Um, the car insurance comes out on a separate date than those other two, but for here, I just roll them up together. Utilities, $64.98. So what I do for utilities, if you're new here, is I have $300 set aside in my bank account for utilities. It's on an auto pay, so it just, you know, drafts out of my account. And at the end of every month, I look at how much came out. Um, the previous month, so that's how much I budget for the next month. So $64.98 came out in November. That's what I'm putting back in in December so that I start at that $300 mark again. Um, so that's how I figure that out because I don't always have all my bills before the month begins. Okay, phone is $85.79. Um, and then subscriptions is $42, or excuse me, $43.52. I have Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Spotify for subscriptions. 
Um, so that's the total for all of them. And then I share with um, my family. Groceries, $500 for the month. Um, I don't know of anything that we're going to have to do like extra, like we're not hosting, but I do um, kind of like to get more snacks, you know, cheese and crackers and meats and things like that. Um, so I think 500 will be fine. It's been working for us pretty well um, the last couple of months. Gas, I normally do 60, but I'm going to do 75 this month. Um, being that we will be traveling to visit family for Christmas um, celebrations, just wanted to increase that to make sure, you know, I kind of had a little bit extra set to the side. And then spending, I normally give myself $500 a month. This month, I'm going to give myself $600. Um, just being that it's, you know, the Christmas season, if I want to pick up something for myself or like a birthday present to myself, I have a little bit of extra spending money there. So the total for this expense section is $28.20 and 10 cents, it looks like. So the remaining amount, I always like to check in here of how much I have remaining. So I have $16.49. And 77 cents remaining. So because I'm in zero based budget, that's how much I have left to allocate, which is great. So the next section of my budget is the funds. Think of this like sinking funds. Um, and let's go through these one by one. So the first is annual. I use this to pay for annual bills, um, things that come up. For me, I just recently paid my AAA membership, um, any credit card like dues, um, my car registration, things of that nature. So I put 120 in every month this year. Miko is my cat. He has $40 um, deposited in his account every year. I should say, I'm not really a cash stuffer. All of these are um, accounts in my Capital One 360. I love it. Um, so $40 for his supplies, food, litter, um, and then it builds up for his annual vet visit too. Incidental is $50. This is my cushion fund. So if any of my bills were to be higher or um, something kind of random category comes up, I can use that $50 to, you know, have a little bit of a buffer. Vacation is going to get $250. That's kind of the normal amount. The past two months have been higher because I had some trips come up, but we're back at this normal level. Um, and I probably will tap into a little bit of this, um, just like a staycation stuff when we go up. Well, I know that we're going to go out to eat a lot more in December than we normally do. So I can use some of that to, you know, help with that. Um, okay. Beauty is going to get $100 this month. Um, this is what I used to buy my skincare, makeup, whatever. Car gets $20. So what I've been doing is $20 a month and then any leftover gas money. So if I only spent, uh, I don't know, 50 out of the 75, that extra 25 would roll into the car fund as well. Um, so that's been working well in September. I had all new tires put on my car and like, you know, a good service once over. So it should be set for a while, but it's always good to have a little bit in there. If something comes up, um, gifts, I'm going to be doing $50 this month. I'm pretty much fully funded for Christmas. Um, and I don't have any other birthdays throughout the rest of the year. So I'm feeling good there. Um, opportunity. So this is kind of like my giving fund. I normally do $20 a month, but this month I'm going to do $150. Um, my dad and I have decided not to do Christmas gifts anymore. And instead we will be donating, um, to a charity. We decided both of us to do a local food pantry, like a food shelf. Um, so I would have spent 150 on him between 100 and 150, um, on his Christmas gift this year. And we decided to donate instead, which I'm really looking forward to. I also have some other, um, planned giving this, um, December. So my boyfriend and I always give out Christmas cards with cash in it, um, to local like bartenders and servers that take good care of us. Um, so that's always nice too. So I'll be doing a lot of giving. Um, in the month of December, but some of it I've just saved up throughout the month. So I'm only putting 150 into the account, but more will be coming out. I'm actually going to empty the account completely at the end of the month. Okay, health. This is a new one. Um, so I'm going to put $100 in here. I am having surgery in the beginning of February. And one of the things that my surgeon recommended is to start taking a set of vitamins, um, things to just help me heal faster, help my skin repair and the scarring and all of that. Um, it's nothing major, so uh, don't freak out, but um, that's something I'm going to have in my line item 
for all of next year and kind of see how it goes. So I'm going to start with $100 because I need to buy all these vitamins and all that stuff. But I don't think it'll be $100 every month, just kind of as needed. And then home is going to get $75. So previously, home and health, I would say, have been joint. Um, anything kind of health related fell into that home category. So I'm hoping when I split them out, it'll help me kind of really separate what's going on there because home has been a little bit out of control this year. Um, so this is a little bit higher than normal. Um, after I have that surgery in February, I won't be able to sit for long periods of time. So thankfully I do work from home um, and I'm going to buy a standing desk attachment. So I'm going to put $75 in in December, 75 in January, and I'll be able to buy you know what I need and a nice thick pad to stand on and all of that because um, I'm having surgery on my lower back tailbone area. So I just won't be able to sit you know, comfortably for a while, but I can still work from home, which is great. And I'm um, just kind of prepping for that now. So it's not such a blow later on. And then the last category is emergency. I put $20 into my emergency fund every month. I do have a fully funded emergency fund with three months of expenses, plus a topper of $1,000. So um, I'm feeling good with where, it at, where I'm at, but I don't want to stop. I just want to always put $20 in and let it build over time. So the total for my sinking funds this month is $975, which gives me a remaining of $674.77 that I still need to allocate. So the last section that I'm going to be filling in today is the investing. Now I do do investing um, before money hits my account, like I have a 401k at work, but this is any investing that's coming out of my take home checks. So the first one is my HSA. I do contribute to my HSA just through my check, but I have a little bit of a gap, um, that I need to, you know, just add into the account to max it out for the year, which is my goal. Um, again, having surgery in February, I'm really grateful to have an HSA account with money set aside, um, for health expenses. So, um, $33.36 is what I'm estimating I'm going to have to put in there. I'll wait to the end of the year to double check that. I may be off by a couple of pennies, but that's what I'm going to budget. Um, and the next is Betterment. I put $25 into a taxable brokerage account with Betterment. I really have enjoyed my experience with Betterment. It's like a robo advisor. So if you want to invest, I have my Roth IRA there too, um, but you're not sure what to do. You fill out a survey of you know, how risky your um, portfolio should be, and then they take care of the rest. It's so easy. Um, so I would highly recommend. I've had a great experience. Um, and then my Roth IRA, every extra penny is going to my Roth IRA right now. So 616 41. Um, hopefully this can be higher. I will have my 2022 tax year finished by April. I won't have it done by the end of December, but that's okay. I kind of knew that going in. So this total here is six seventy four seventy seven, which means I have a remainder of zero dollars, which is exactly what I'm looking for. I do leave this cash flow section at the end of my budget. Um, occasionally, I will cash flow things to come out of here um, instead of a sinking fund, but I don't have plans for that. I do like to leave it though, just in case something comes up throughout the month. I have a spot to write it in to document the actuals. So that is my budget for December. I'm really glad I saved for Christmas gifts throughout the year. Um, and I am just, you know, really excited to get into the holiday season. December is my favorite month because my birthday happens, Christmas happens, the new year happens, and all of those things actually happen within seven days. So it's like this power week. Um, and it's just really fun for me. So Anyway, I hope you guys have a great December. Let me know if you are changing or making differences in your budget because of the holidays or anything else that's going on. I'd love to hear about it down below in the comment section. And otherwise, I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.